Now I know you've got your favourite presidents and maybe there are a few who you don't like quite so much but you might change your mind after this video because I'm going to tell you about these super linguist presidents, the polyglot presidents, including one who spoke more languages than I do and some very unusual study techniques to boot. James Madison was five foot four and weighed about 100 pounds, but what he lacked in stature he made up for in intellect. He started learning in Latin when he was only 11, and by the time he started college he had mastered Latin and was proficient in Greek and French too. One of his secrets was that he used to copy Latin poetry from magazines into his notebook, which is pretty cool, although I can't help wonder what would have happened to me at school if I'd spent my teens copying Latin poetry. Greek was actually an admissions requirement for college back then. They were expected to know it before they even got there, and once Madison Madison was in, he studied Hebrew and took it really seriously. Records say that he spoke and read Hebrew fluently, and uh, as for his French, well, he did that with a Scottish accent. I mean, I wonder what that would sound like. Funny story, one day Madison was asked to interpret for a Frenchman who'd come to the college, but try as he might, this French guy could not understand a word that the future president was saying. Madison said, I might as well have been talking kickapoo at him. Perhaps that is what happens when you learn a language just through textbooks, I don't know. Madison's biography says he also studied Italian and probably Spanish as well, but didn't get too far. Anyway, he went on to translate many Latin speeches and quite the cheeky one, he added his own corrections of English translations of some pretty important Latin works. He was just really focused on improving his skills and he would even rewrite an author's sentence in a way that heightened their clarity and precision. What do you do when the first lady speaks more languages than you do? Well, you put her languages to good work, of course. Hoover and his lovely wife, Lou, once translated an enormous mining book from Latin to English. He said it was very difficult because the technical terms had been invented by the author 600 years after Latin was dead. Well, the Hoovers knew all about digging deep into languages. They traveled the world seven times. They lived in China for several years. They learned to speak Mandarin really well too. So when Herb became president, he and Lou would chat in Mandarin when they knew that the staff were eavesdropping. Nice. Interestingly, he spent his childhood summers on the Osage Reservation with his uncle and loved learning Osage words with his friends. It's a pity that he never kept the language up. You know, I've always had the impression that people always took language learning more seriously in the old days. Is that just a fantasy? It's just me. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. James A. Garfield, the president who was born in a log cabin. Kids used to mock him for that, so he turned to reading and then fell in love with languages, something that many of us on this channel might be able to relate to. The uh, falling in love with languages bit, not the log cabin. Garfield once addressed a group of German immigrants in their native tongue, making him the first presidential candidate ever to campaign in a foreign language. As far as I know, he's still the only US president to campaign in both English and German, but that is nothing. This guy had a cool trick. He was ambidextrous, but that hardly explains it. You listening? Garfield used to entertain his friends by having them ask him questions and then he would write the answer in Latin with one hand while simultaneously writing the answer in Greek with the other. It's quite the party trick. Can you imagine your president doing that? Can you imagine yourself? Can you imagine anyone doing that? Before you reach for those two pens though, uh, I see you doing that. Maybe first you can click these buttons here with two hands. There's another cool trick coming up later, only this time it will be a very useful one that I might try myself. If you ever wondered why the US doesn't have an official language, here's your reason. Jefferson didn't believe it was the business of the federal government to regulate what languages people speak. He was fascinated with Native American cultures and languages and collected word lists from many native languages which he then went on to study, hoping to figure out their origins. According to his travel notes from 1788, Jefferson could speak French, Latin, Italian, Greek, Spanish and Arabic. And as if that wasn't enough, he also studied and wrote about the Anglo-Saxon language, you know, Old English. Interesting fact, after he died, they found tons of Arabic Arabic, Irish, and Welsh books in his personal library, dictionaries, grammar manuals, you name it. But I guess that is pretty normal if you love languages. I mean, just saying. <laughs> anyway, he told his friend that he learned Spanish in 19 days while sailing to France. He borrowed a Spanish grammar book and Don Quixote and read them both on the voyage. Not that they believed him, of course, I mean, 19 days. But having said that, the funny thing is that reading a Spanish book while traveling is exactly how I got my breakthrough in Spanish as well. I talk about the whole story which took place on top of a mountain in this video. In fact, how I stumbled across the whole story learning method that I teach with, story learning is my system for teaching languages through stories. Maybe I should call it the presidential method. But either way, if you'd like to find out more about how to use stories to learn a new language, then take a look at my free story learning kit. I'll link it in the description below. By the way, if you've noticed, we are also counting English in languages spoken as well, since when isn't English a language? It totally counts. For example, President Martin Van Buren didn't even speak English as his first language. He was Dutch. But wait a minute, wasn't there a president who sang in Dutch? 
Teddy Roosevelt always remembered a Dutch nursery song that his grandma taught him, and he used to sing it to his own kids and grandkids, but that is unfortunately all the Dutch that he actually knew. Sorry. Still though, these few lines helped him bond with the Afrikaners that he met in Africa when he was on a nine-month safari. That's right, a nursery rhyme. They were very impressed with this though, because Afrikaans has a similar nursery rhyme to the one he learns in Dutch. Anyway, Teddy could read and understand German, French, Italian, and Latin, and kept a good number of books in those languages. But he still struggled to speak them. He said that he had a German accent when speaking French and that his grammar was lawless, whatever that means. Well, he preferred informal French, and why not? He might not have known his tenses from his genders, but he made two public addresses in the West Indies in French, and everyone understood him just fine. Teddy didn't care too much about insults, though. It was water off a duck's back for him. He had his own funny names for everyone that would do that, like human trombone and blatherskite. I bet this one won't surprise you, though. Old Teddy Roosevelt, well, he tried to make English spelling, his own words, a little less full foolish and fantastic. His words, not mine, but I will save curious spelling reforms for another day. He studied Greek too, but he said that Greek and Latin were both a dreary labour to translate. Eh, they probably were. When John Quincy Adams was young, his famous father told him, if you don't succeed, it will be owing to your own laziness, slovenliness, and obstinacy. He was sent to school in both France and the Netherlands to learn French, he became fluent in, and Dutch, which he became conversational in. And this is aside from the usual Latin and Greek, of course. He was only 10 when they started dragging him along on diplomatic missions across the seas to help as a translator. France, Spain, Russia, when he was 14. At sea, without his mum, the kid survived hurricanes and attacks, a lightning storm that struck four people dead, a leaking ship. Hardly surprising that he ended up with such a bad personality, which he himself admitted. So at age 12, he started writing. He wrote poetry and kept diaries for nearly 70 years. He also learned to play the flute and wrote his own musical compositions. But this next language hack is one that I want to try. So every morning, John got up at 5.30 a.m. to translate something, a page a day of Latin, a page a day of Dutch. And he did it with German too. He would translate and then write letters and then have Italian lessons after that. He struggled with Italian and Russian apparently because he never had anyone to practice speaking speaking with. And of course, as we know, if you want to learn to speak a language, well, you've got to actually speak it. But there you go, guys. The secret to language superpowers apparently is translating. Hmm. Did you add up his language arsenal, though? And John's last words were English ones. This is the end of Earth. I am content. May I present FDR? No, this is not an editing blunder. This is Franklin Roosevelt, aged two and a half, a look which I uh, have on good authority was considered normal in 1884. To add to an awesome childhood of horse riding, slaying, and lion skin rugs, Frankie was raised by governesses from Europe who bathed him until he was eight and spoke to him in German and French. Their job was to prepare him for boarding school in his teens. He even spent one summer of his schooling in Germany. One of his eight governesses was Swiss, so it's likely that he also learned her Swiss-French dialect too. So all in all, his French must have been pretty cool, right? It must have been pretty good. Well, we are going to jump in the time machine to hear his French from a speech in 1936. <laughs> Isn't it nice when your whole family speaks French because they can? Well, James Monroe and the whole Monroes, all of the Monroes, spoke excellent French, in fact, and loved Paris so much that they lived there for a while. They even wrote each other letters in French, ate French food, and practiced French customs back in the US. Probably very helpful when you're being homeschooled by your mum. But James had to learn Hebrew all on his own at university and achieved a high degree of mastery in the language. Pretty great for a guy who lost both parents in his mid-teens and was then almost, almost fatally wounded in battle at age 17. Well, his French served him extremely well when he got into politics. And if you want to hear how modern politicians measure up in their linguistic skills, well, take a look at this video where I react to nine US politicians, presidential candidates, no less, speaking Spanish, which is quite fun because, as you know, these days, the politicians can't do anywhere near as well as they did in the past. Or can they? 